We have lost more than half a million lives to the COVID-19 pandemic, and even those who have survived are having a difficult time returning to regular life, no matter how eager they are to get outside because of some long lasting symptoms. Now, one year into this pandemic, we are slowly getting some answers when it comes to long term complications and mobility, including some answers about the muscle, nerves and joints. We're starting to come to the realization that COVID and, and similar viruses are going to be part of our lives going forward. Dr. Swati Deshmukh, a musculoskeletal radiologist and an assistant professor at Northwestern University, says she noticed a trend at the beginning of the pandemic. My team and I started seeing a lot of patients with nerve injuries, especially a lot of COVID-19 patients who had been hospitalized. They initially had thought the damage was from keeping COVID patients on their stomachs for a prolonged period of time to help them breathe easier. But then we started seeing other complications. So we started seeing the virus causing more of an inflammatory condition. We started seeing hematomas that were compressing the nerves. We realized that there was more going on to the story. So she let the images tell that story. They saw muscles that have degenerated post COVID diagnosis and COVID causing a dormant case of rheumatoid arthritis to make a comeback. They even saw COVID triggering psoriatic arthritis in a 30 year old patient who came in with rashes and joint pain two weeks after her bout. The images confirming for the first time the effect of COVID on the body, even if patients didn't show symptoms. It's always good to see patients who are surviving the illness, who are recovering from extreme sickness, who are going on with their lives. But I think it's, it's emotionally draining to see so many people who have such long term disabilities now and have to go through so much medical care now. So with COVID-19, we had some sense that there would be musculoskeletal complications. We just didn't anticipate it to explode to this level where so many people have been infected and there have been so many unusual complications and, and also the lack of testing early on, I think, made it harder to correlate the virus with the symptoms that people have been reporting. Since the release of her and her team's study, Dr. Deshmukh says several people have written to her to let her know that her research gave them clarity about the murky waters of life after COVID. She read us an email that she had received. I think the most frustrating part being the patient is not knowing where to turn to. It seems like each doctor works independently, focusing only on those specific symptoms, not the big picture. Thank you for seeing the big picture. Thank you for your research. Thank you for giving me hope that what I'm experiencing, I'm not alone. So the question that leaves us with after this story is how does this affect us in real life or at the doctor's office? So let's say there's a patient who came into the doctor's office because of some shoulder pain that started after a COVID diagnosis. The doctor can order some imaging. And if the radiologist knows about this study, then they can point that patient to the right direction, to the right specialist, like a rheumatologist, knowing that COVID could very well possibly be the cause behind that shoulder pain. How oh, interesting. That's so helpful. Thank you, Sharon. So what's the next step in the study for the doctor you spoke to and the team she works with? Well, the doctor said that she will continue to look at nerve imaging and hopefully they can find some information that could lead to prevention so that the nerves will be prevented from being damaged permanently. All right. Thanks so much, Sharon. We appreciate it.